a torrid mystery. I'm Rebecca Lee. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. In July 1954, a man arrives at Haneda Airport, which is Tokyo Airport. He's Caucasian, regular-looking guy, but people are a little suspicious. Hmm. They check his passport, and they see he comes from a country called Torrid. T-O-U-R-E-D. Passport looks legit, except for the fact that Torrid doesn't exist. (laughs) The country is suspect in that it doesn't appear on the globe. Okay, okay. Can we work with that? Yes, we can. So they interrogate him Mm -hmm. and ask to point on a map, where's Torrid? Mm -mm. And he points to Andorra, the Principality of Andorra, which is real. Mm -hmm. It is on the border of France and Spain. Okay, okay. They actually have their own language that not a lot of people speak. And I was listening to people speak it. Mm -hmm. I think we've talked about languages that are kind of... Yeah, hybridizations Not, of different it things. It seemed a yeah. little bit like that, and it's its own. Uh-huh. I don't know what a principality really entails, Yeah, but it's on the border of France and Spain. Yeah, well, France, I mean, I just know this from literally high school and middle school French, where even French dialects vary so much, like Corsican, which Corsica is an island in France, has its own language that kind of sounds like France, but again, it's not quite, it's feels like it's off. So like there's so many different variations of languages in these small European spaces just because from isolation, essentially. Je m'appelle Jason. Oh, je m'appelle Rebecca. So there's your Rebecca. French lesson for today. <laughs> Were we charming? Yes. Absolutely. So he points to Andorra. Okay. And he's like, that's where it is. And he doesn't understand why there's no Torrid on this map. Hmm. Because... It's existed for more than a thousand years, Mm -hmm. so he doesn't understand. They found on him different currencies, okay, okay, European currencies, all legit, natural. And his passport was stamped by many airports. Uh, He's been around around the globe. All that very legit, and including previously coming to Tokyo. So they don't know what is going on. And he's probably getting pissed because he's like, "Why are you stopping me? For look at this, all this money. This is where I'm from. Look at my passport. Is it good or not?" And it's not good because it says that he's from Torrid. <laughs> he He's like, no, I literally just came from Torrid. Yeah. So I didn't know what to do with him. Yeah. Because without a passport, you're kind of in limbo. Yeah. They took him to a local hotel and put him in a room mm-hmm. and had guards outside until they can figure out what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Maybe there's some, I don't know. Red tape countries like they don't a, know. They, maybe they don't know everything. Yeah. Does he have like a, a driver's license from Torrid? Like, did he have other... Things, a library card from the Torrid Public Library. So the company that he worked for Uh had no idea who this person was. Oh, that's not good either. Although he had plenty of information to prove otherwise. Okay. The hotel that he was staying at in Tokyo were like, we don't know who this person is. The officials in Tokyo that he was there to do business with have no idea who he is. Perfect. Perfect. All right. It's not just the passport, folks. It's literally everything around it. <laughs> so they go back to the hotel, and they take a quick break, and they're back. And they're back. They go to the hotel mm-hmm. to you know, kind of sort this out. Yeah. He is gone. Oh, my God. Yes. yes. There's no way he could leave I from love the that. window. He was a ghost the whole time. No? The suggestions are maybe even less believable. <laughs> wow. And there was no balcony. So there was nowhere for him to go. What is the explanation? So that's it. That's it. That's it. That's, that's where story. your story ends today. A uh, passport from a country that doesn't exist. Guy points it out as a different country, principality. People that he's there to meet, no idea who he is. Company works for, no idea. Put him in a hotel room. He but the is, company does exist. It exists. That is real, yes. But he just affiliates The hotel with it. is real okay. everything is the airport is real tokyo everything is real. real okay okay everything is real what are the explanations and theories people are working with i love this this is my this is amazing this is like you get a limited amount of information and your brain gets to go 
ham on whatever. I think he maybe worked for, was he a secret servant? Like, is there some kind of government intelligence thing that got blown? Like, he's a junior agent, and it got blown, and he freaked out, and he had someone come and, in a way that no one could understand, break him out of the hotel room? Multiple dimensions is the working <laughs> theory people have. It is the, wow. it is the example mm-hmm. and proof of many different dimensions, many different timelines that we're all going through and the one that he happened to be in just did not he wasn't in the right one he he somehow the plane flew picked him like how would he how the terran dimensions how would he have traversed that i'm sure he doesn't know i think he was according to this i want to see pictures of that passport too i want a, a documentary about this that will slowly unfold the mysteries of different dimensions not a lot of information. There's a couple of mentions in some books from the 1970s, I believe. Mm-hmm. But even internet searches really don't go back until 2012 when this kind of story either popped up or repopped up. Mm, Here's bankrupt. a couple of other things is that people talk about, you know, what customs was like in 1954. Mm-hmm. Is it possible that this is based on some story and this is what it's evolved to Hmm. is it a complete and total hoax something someone made up exactly or is it a hoax on his part Mm -hmm. where this actually happened Mm -hmm. so it's it's it could be a combination of a bunch of things yeah for people that believe in multi timelines multi-dimensions you know they they use use a lot in a lot of movies where it's like listen the, the Rebecca and I in this one, you know, yeah. we're sitting on a pile of money. That's right. We're sexy as hell. We're, yeah. you know, we look amazing. We are fabulously wealthy and famous. And, you know, maybe in a different dimension, we're sexier, wealthier. But the one we're in right now yeah. that you are in, uh huh. you know, you get what you get. <laughs> you get the hand, the dimension you're dealt, as my mom always said. So – People use this as an example of mm. this is somebody from another dimension. So is it a hoax? Is it. it real? Is it a story? Ugh, I love that. The details, sometimes the details are so specific that it feels real and you want yeah. it to be real. And there could be elements of the story that are real. It's just 1954. Yeah. But like you said, you're asking for proof and documentation. You're not going to find it. No. But I, I love – I love – it is it is detail enough that my brain can work with that and will take it places where, you know, who knows? Because you'll never get any closure on it. But I love – I mean, interdimensional stuff is so fun and interesting. Like, oh, we should do more episodes on it, to be honest, because there's, there's other things that are like that that we could talk about. and But we'll just never get any closure on it. Well, mm-hmm. I guess I'll have to fly to Tokyo with my torrid mall clothing store <laughs> – Passport and find out. You mean the like the store Torrid? The store T- Torrid. T O R R I D. Does it still exist? You'll never know. If you like weird and strange history as much as I do, then I have the podcast for you. I'm Jason Horton, host of Strange Year. Each episode, I break down the strange history and cultural happenings during that year, like 1977, the Wow Signal, 1963, Three Tramps Theory, 1844, the Millerite Movement, 1997, the Phoenix Lights, 1896, the Shortest War, 2004, Benjamin Kyle, 1518, the Dancing Plague, 1985, the Move Bombing, 1972, Remote Viewing. So to get your weekly weird history fix, pause the podcast you're listening to right now and subscribe to Strange Year wherever you listen to podcasts.